Hello, human peoples. You're listening to the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. Support us and gain access to great exclusive podcasts like Fox Mulder is a Maniac, Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, Star Trek The Next Futurama, and our latest show, Spiel Boys. Head over to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. We do game streaming, movie nights with our patrons every Friday night, and you can even commission your own podcast about anything you want. Literally anything, within reason, and we have to do it. You are quite frankly out of excuses not to go visit patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Halbkasten mit Tom Reimann an David Bell. I worked overnight at a diner and some really dark years uh, was me like waking up at like, because I lived five minutes from the diner, yeah. so it would be me waking up at like 11.35 th- at night, throwing on a dirty shirt that I wore the whole week, and like <laughs> driving straight there, and it was like, that was some real darkness right there. <laughs> some good really, really, 20s dirt bag. Really <laughs> kissing oblivion right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I worked an uh, overnight at a fucking hotel doing security and in my 20s, of course. And that Oof. Uh, yeah. Horrible. I hated that. <laughs> yeah. Just t- yep, yeah. tickle in the balls of despair. Yep. yep. Exactly. That's what that is. <laughs> Talk about kids and oblivion, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, good times. Just just oh, rimming yeah, eternity. So. Mm. <laughs> rimming eternity. Toss that eternal eternal salad. You got to <laughs> oh, you got to write a romance novel called Rimming Eternity. Eternity. Yeah, tossing Holy the moly. celestial salad. <laughs> oh, Speaking great. of tossing the celestial salad. Um, hello everyone. Hello. Welcome to some Hypecast. Hypecast. It's the show where we get hyped about stuff and things. I'm your co-host Tom Ryman. I'm your other co-host, David Bell. And I'm the guest, Christian Ramirez. Christian! Hey. Hey. Thank you. Oh, yeah. How are you? Um, you, you guys know. <laughs> we were at a <laughs> wedding together two weeks ago. You know. We were. Yeah, yeah we were. That's true. That's true. You we seemed know. well. Yeah. Did you get sick as well? Oh, no, I didn't get sick, thankfully. I was just kind of wow. like burning the candle at both ends for a little while because, okay, this is, this, I guess, this this is where this goes. <laughs> I started dating again <laughs> the week before, like Mother's Day weekend was for my first date since like post breakup and everything. And so, right. so that was like two weeks before the wedding. So I had been on like six dates within a two week span and I was done. I was like fucking out. And so then oh. wedding wedding week happened. Everything was really fun. But we, I mean, you guys know, we stayed up late, we danced, all this crazy shit. And then after yeah. that, I spent the next week, weekend, going to my friend's house in the mountains, where again, we stayed up until like 2 a.m. drinking, like hanging oh. out. So I am just like, I told you, weird energy. I got a tetanus shot on Monday, and I'm just kind of fucking, you know, pushing you through are, to the weekend. Yeah, <laughs> you are partied out. Yeah, yeah. you're 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 et in the ditch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very. That is. Yeah. yeah that's it right just, now. Just but, drained. You know, just blanched. You know, <laughs> this isn't as easy at 37 as it was in my 20s. That's for sure. No, you can't yeah. bounce back. It's it's really hard. It really, I still, really I've mentioned it before. Yeah, I keep thinking back when I went to this this uh, festival in England. It was a four day festival. Yeah. Just woke up every day, railed some speed, got in a mosh <laughs> pit for twelve hours, slept in a tent with a space blanket, no no like <laughs> foam or no mat- mattress of any kind, and then just would get uh, get shit faced drunk every uh, night yeah. and just do it for four days straight. 
And it's like that. Yeah, and you're like, how this is, is that even never possible? gonna end? Like you think you're yeah. the only person who's ever been young before. You're like, oh, yeah, man, exactly. nobody else ever figured this out. Just like right. do whatever you want all the time, and you're fine. Yeah, Wonderful. you'll 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 live forever. It's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're never gonna die, Dave. Never gonna uh-huh. die. Yeah, it's our Woo! solemn promise. I yep. am immortal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's I the gameplay on the promise. I blood of kings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where, yeah. Never going to die, Tom. Nope. Never. Immortal. It's not going to happen. Used to. Mm-hmm. Never going to happen. We should probably, <laughs> what, what should we do? We should probably start the show. Well, right? we should ask Christian if he's got anything right. to tell yes. the world. Oh, Thank, yeah. You know, we thanked him for coming. We much appreciate you being here. And if you have anything you'd like to tell the world, like a plug or oh, a manifesto, yeah. Or just anything. Uh, now's the, the time. Doctrine. Sure. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, uh, like I said, I'm single again, so you can find me on Hinge. Um, <laughs> nice. <I'm kidding. laughs> Seriously, but also that was a joke. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm on Twitter at Fanboy Christian, and uh, I think this should be noted up top. Uh, Michael and Abe are putting together a movie right now called Papa Bear. And as of when you are hearing this recording... The next day, on Saturday, there is going to be a fundraising live stream from 4 p.m. Pacific to 12 a.m. Pacific, uh, where a bunch of us are going to come hang out, uh, do a bunch of watch a bunch of old cracked videos, and you know, just shoot the shit while we try to raise some funds for their independent film. That, uh, yeah, I think all of it, we've been lucky enough to see the script for and everything, and yeah, we really want to get it made for them. So yeah, come out, uh, drop a few bucks if you can. If not, just share the info about that, and that would be greatly appreciated. Yes. Nice plug. Yeah, Yeah, uh, I should be there for that. Um, At least part of it. I'll be there for that, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. it's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. We are. A good time. We are. Yeah. We're going to be We're we're probably all still tired from the wedding. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) We're going to be there. Yes. I'm so exhausted. (laughs) (laughs) Just more Uh, weird uh, energy tomorrow. Listeners, never get old. Never get old. Yeah. Never. Don't do it. Oh, don't yeah. do it. Do a don't Dorian you Gray dare. if you can. Get a dare. portrait that can get old for you. Yeah. yeah or if, just if va- at all vampire possible. out. Yes. Yeah. Vamp Vampiring. Out sure. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Go to I'm, goth I'm, clubs. Get bit by everybody. You're bound to get an actual <laughs> one vampire. One of them is going to be an actual like yeah. real life ghoul. So yeah, you're yeah, going to get other things too. You're going to get a lot of other things. <laughs> sure. But you'll yeah, eventually yeah. get vampirism as well yeah no but once you're a vampire that kind of cancels all that stuff out right yeah exactly (laughs) yeah it's a good plan um speaking of like stuff and things good plans um, we sure we got (laughs) producers to thank so why don't we thank some producers yeah uh big thank you to at nerd numbers thank Thank you. you very much Woo. Thank you to Zero Charisma. Thank you. Thank you to Aaron Burser. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you to AJ. Thanks so much. Thank you to Andrew Howard. Deck the halls with blood. Thank you. Thank mm. you to Asking Seven. Thank you. Thank you to Barry Two Math. Once you go to the gym and drink water. Oh, and Sky's Life. You love you all. Pick, pick it up. 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 Thank you to Bob Grenville. Thank you so much. All right, let me swoop in here. Thank you to Bootler Bootlison. Thank you. Thank you to Brian, whom Tom knows. It's yeah. true. Thinking of Brockway loves the meat millie. Thank you. Thinking of Chester's prophet. Yes. Yeah. Thinking of Christopher Robert Sparks Esquire. Thank you. Thinking of Dan Hackroyd. Thank yeah. you. Thinking of Davy the Ghost of East Las Vegas Francis. Thank you. And thinking of David Knife Boot Henson. Knife no, no, Knife boot. within the boot. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Oh. Oh. This is a. Uh, we have trailers. We do. We got a real. Oh, we got a real this mix. Is, this man. is um. <laughs> this is technically an off week, but I don't feel that way. No. I, I I feel like there's lots to talk about here. Um, starting with expend for bulls. <laughs> the expend for bulls. Expend, expend for bulls. The long-awaited the sequel. For bulls. Yeah, I was I was absolutely surprised that this was only four. I really yeah. thought that they had done five or six Expendables. It feels like it it, sh- it should have been because it's. I think it's been like ten years since Expendables three. Really? Yeah. yeah. It is. What do you guys think of the other ones? Because this is. I don't know. It's got Jason Statham. Uh, it's got um, Megan Fox. 
uh, Dolph and then Lundgren's like run around in there. Yeah, it's yeah. got the other Eco Ice the from the ones. raid. Mm-hmm. Right, it's, it's got yeah Stallone's uh, in there. Yeah, yeah. Did you guys? Do you guys even remember the other three? Because uh, I, I, I remember being very underwhelmed by all the the movies because yeah the the whole which is kind of one of my issues with this trailer which the whole idea of the Expendables as a movie was putting together all of these old action stars finally together you know after all these years yeah um it's and the aarp of action uh, right yeah but it, it's it, <laughs> the idea was like oh f- finally it's gonna be like arnold and bruce willis and van damme and stallone and you know all all the guys yeah. that were the kings of the 80s and 90s action movies that never did anything together are finally in this movie um but it was like really underwhelming like and yeah and just like the they really didn't do anything for me. And then like this trailer is so far removed from that initial concept. Like the beginning of this trailer kind of plays out like a version of Mr. And Mrs. Smith starring Jason Statham right. and Megan Fox. Yeah. Like you would never guess that this was an expendables movie until it tells you it's the expendables. <laughs> um, so I just, I don't know what this franchise even is anymore. Right. So, I agree. Yeah. They yeah, all just kind of got old, right? Like that's that's actually what happened, and they can't do the shit that they did when they were younger. And so, right, Stallone's the like movie quality now. does. Yeah. yeah, the quality of the movie it's suffers not even... from that kind of because you, they, uh, you, yeah, you can't expect them to do the shit that they were doing when they were twenty. <laughs> like that's not hundred <laughs> percent. It also, I would say, part of them getting older also meant they got bigger. So the <laughs> Expendables films also felt like they're like a contractual stunt show. Yeah. Where it felt like they were like mixing and matching all these conflicting fucking schedules. And so it never really like, again, I don't remember it that well, but I don't remember ever feeling satisfied what you're saying where it's like, oh, Schwarzenegger and Stallone fighting each other. And this is the big (laughs) scene. You know what I mean? Like it always felt like they were all kind of shot around each other and might not necessarily (laughs) the same Yeah, like like Arrested Development season four. Yeah, and Bruce Willis would like, come in for one scene, and then he's not. So it, it's that combination of they're all older, uh, and then they're all just like busy, and they're all really expensive. Yeah, and so it's just like it's like we don't get anyone. If that's what it felt like, is like we don't really get enough of anybody uh, to make it worthwhile. And then the Fast and the Furious kind of blew up more. Yeah, and we were just like, well, that let's do that instead. Yeah, absolutely. Like the. the it, yeah, it kind of took the campy actionness um from the Expendables Fast and Furious did, but made it like something that was more appealing to people. Um so like it's it feels like Expendables just de- it, it kind of like it was a good idea, but ultimately it didn't really offer anything that we couldn't get anywhere else. Yeah. That's my feeling. Yeah. Um I, I remember like three things and I think that's like one from each movie. In the first movie, I think Stone Cold Steve Austin is killed by Randy Couture because he's set on fire. In yeah, and see that, <laughs> that sounds that awesome. Sounds like it may have happened. I don't remember. And that's the thing. That's the I, other I thing about either. these movies. <laughs> I don't think these movies are necessarily bad. For the record, I no. think it's it's the same as like the Fast and the Furious, where I forget every single one. They're forgettable. One. Yeah, but it's just yeah, it's just that these movies kind of there was an era that these could have been bigger and they, I was thinking about this the other day. Cause I was, I've been watching the Godzilla films, the new ones in yeah. like 20 minute installments, 20 to 40 <laughs> minutes installments <laughs> while I exercise. Just micro dosing them. <laughs> well, I, I just, I get on the bike and I go for about a half hour to an hour and I stick on a part of a Godzilla and I was yeah. watching those movies and I was, first of all, those movies are still very dumb. They're, oh, they're I would, I would argue they they're too gritty it doesn't matter we don't have to talk about godzilla yeah, but stop, my point stop was trying that to i was insert your anti godzilla <laughs> agenda and everything i was Dave. watching them and i was thinking like if these were made in the 90s this would be the biggest movie of the summer sure and it just sort of like every movie is this now you know what i mean yeah and it's the yeah. same with expendables yeah. which is like this should be like a huge fucking series yeah in a vacuum but it's just that we're so used to this shit now these like balls to the wall action it's the only kind of blockbuster that gets made yeah right so it's like uh, yeah it's just wild to me that like you know i thought back of when in the 90s there was a godzilla and it was like that was a big deal there was like tie-ins and promotionals and all this shit and and then and it 
it resonated even yeah. despite being a bad movie um right it was the, now it was like, the biggest movie of the summer mm-hmm. yeah where now it's just like it's one of the movies of the summer uh yeah. it's weird so it's I was just going to say, it's this just thing. Is that too. It's yeah, it's this thing that I think a lot of people have talked about. I know we've talked about on here before uh, that the mid-budget movie is just fucking gone now, and right, and that's there's... what all of these used to be. It's like, and Matt Damon, I think, was the one that talked about this, and that why I'm getting this thing from specifically, and it's because there's no secondary market for anything anymore. Everything just goes to streaming. Oh, yeah. There's no DVD sales. There's no like none of that exists so like what are they gonna do if you have a 60 million dollar movie like it's they they just don't make them anymore yes and so like expendables specifically is one of those where whenever i keep thinking about i'm like how is that not bigger yeah (laughs) i mean i'm sure it's doing fine i'm sure the first three did fine but it's just weird to me that i can watch this trailer and be like yeah looks all right they just missed their window i think i think that's that's all it is like yeah yeah uh do we have any other thoughts about this one no just that just to echo what i said earlier that this was never that good to begin with so no i yeah i don't think that so i i did say these weren't bad movies and i i stand by that however these movies if you remember used cgi blood which was bad yeah that was garbage yeah yeah just that that was an unfortunate period of movie making yeah it was yeah um i'll say the one of an, um, expendables sequel that i want to see is like a universal stunt show that's why i think the expendables oh, yeah. franchise Hell yeah. Hell should yeah. be is a live yeah. stunt show I, that would be have awesome the, have the yeah. have the water world stunt show lead into it oh uh, like, yeah. like costner jumps his jet ski into the expendables and then oh, it get continues costner from there. and the expendables yeah why sure. not i mean yeah, yeah. That's a shit fuck it just have him be Man. bull durham he can hit people with a bat <laughs> it's fine uh or just have him be just fucking be superman's Hood, dad or oh, yeah superman's and he just dad. keeps, he keeps yeah. refusing to be saved that's the whole thing he just keeps getting his ass kicked because he puts up his hand and shakes his yeah. head at any uh attempt at yeah people helping him uh, he can be mr brooks yeah any mr Ooh, brooks yeah. fans in the audience <laughs> yeah. yeah uh with dane Cook. where are my brooks what brothers at <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, next trailer. Yeah, Bird Box Barcelona. Uh, oh man! First of all, that na- that title is mm, <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. I just all I can think of is the Office gag: Bears beats yeah Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, um, this trailer is. Are you guys ready to see Bird Box a second time? <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's I the exact barely ready it's to the see exact it the first time. same movie, just with a different cast. Yeah, it's so, it's just the exact same thing. I think Netflix, I think they know what happened with Bird Box, and the reason I say that is because this is clearly a smaller movie. There, I didn't recognize anybody in it. Right? It's it's not a no. Right? Yeah. They didn't they didn't get a celebrity because Bird Box blew up, um, but it was on streaming during the pandemic, if I'm yep. not uh, mistaken. And so we said it at the time where it was like this is not a success do not consider this movie a success um it's it nobody had anything going on and it was right there to watch yep like of course it did huge numbers um i think netflix also realized that because they didn't look at that and go all right let's double the budget let's let's crank these out yeah. they they Dave, this one feels bird box came out in 2018 oh so it wasn't even the fucking it pandemic. Wasn't the pandemic no it was just <laughs> It was streaming. I know it was yeah, streaming it was movies. Streaming. It was, it was net- and I remember everybody watched it and it was like, it was, yeah, but no one loved it or anything. It was a big shrug. It was one of the first, it was one of Netflix's first like gambles at oh, like a four right. quadrant movies. popcorn blockbuster. Right. Like, you know, they, they had, they had been trying with, you know, with Oscar movies for a few years before that, but this was kind of like their first big push to be like, let's, right. let's get like, you know, like a popcorn hit. Yeah. And the thing was, is that both Bird Box and the John Krasinski one uh, stole their idea from that book, right? And then they made the book into a movie way later with Stanley Tooch. Well, remember that? Well, I thought Bird Box was was based directly on a book. 
Was it not? Oh, was it? Oh, maybe. I just know that there was, I think, the silence. There was the one that was um, the tooch. The was tooch it. was the silence, yeah, which was, was the silence. You, yeah. you can't make a noise. Yeah. Right. That one came that before all of these. And, yeah. Emily Blunt, too, was the quiet yeah, one. That, that, the quiet, yeah. The quiet, quiet place, place, I guess, yeah. ripped. The quiet place ripped that one off. Um, it it yeah, was this, this uh, weird uh, era. Bird Box where, is based directly on a novel. So. Okay. But it felt like that right young adult novel era where it was like, what if we took away someone's sense, like a single sense? <laughs> yeah. And then they like, yeah. we got so much content around that idea because we also got the like, don't breathe movies, which I think are in that ballpark. Um, we got Bird Box. We got uh, The Quiet Place. Uh, we got that Jason Momoa show. And like, yeah. none of these are good or bad, but there was like this brief obsession with this idea, right? yeah uh and uh point being that this movie just felt like it was part of that and i remember it being ridiculously unremarkable um but i also barely remember it at this point it produced an excellent meme did it <laughs> yeah of uh of, of, of tom hollander uh forcing that old lady's eyes open <laughs> it's a it's a it's a versatile meme it is that do you remember good. the julianne moore movie blindness no, no, I don't. That that was like a decade before this stuff. And that movie is bleak. Just fucking warning. That movie is fucked up. Yeah. And it's about everybody goes blind. And that's it. There's no monsters. They don't, you know, there's no like weird boogans. They don't feel the need to make it this weird sci-fi thing. It's just what if a disease made everybody in the world suddenly go blind? Yeah. Um what would that be like? And that's it. Um, and it's a, a it's a very bleak movie, um, but it it came before all these is my point. Um, but yeah, this really does just seem like Bird Box again, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like, what is there to do with this premise again? Not I don't I don't it's know. The... Like, yeah, nothing really. Like the with the best versions of these movies have already been done in other spaces, and it's like when like. Uh, I can't remember the the one where the girl's deaf and she has the guy stalking her that one uh in the house i can't remember what it's called but oh yeah. the um fucking uh, um hush hush, hush. Yeah. yeah hush was that one like they've had a yep. bunch of like either the killer or somebody in the movie and it just works better on a small scale like this kind of stuff is yeah always kind of silly <laughs> i feel like yeah i think especially with both bird box and a quiet place which is that the tension is one thing yeah. like with a quiet place i saw the first one i wasn't impressed i never saw the second because it's just what if they make noise like that's the <laughs> tension right yeah Do, uh, oh is that gonna make a noise it didn't make noise oh is that gonna oh he made a noise like that's it that's all they kind of have yeah um maybe they mixed it up in the sequel i don't know like maybe they figured it out but this seems like the same thing right where it's like mm -hmm. better not look oh you looked <laughs> it's like yeah that's that was the first one too you know i don't know um it's like for me it's like a less interesting zombie apocalypse i yeah. don't know i mean because like here's the thing like blind people exist like they yeah. live in our world so this movie is just kind of like oh, okay well then i guess we just have to pay attention and listen to what blind people do like they could just teach us how to survive i guess i don't know what to a lot i think a, yeah a lot of these always hinged on characters acting like dumb right like I, right. that was my problem with a quiet place which was like they're like we go to this waterfall where they don't hear us but we don't <laughs> live there like we just right. go there like things like that where it's like i okay like this like they have to i don't know they always feel very convoluted yeah very contrived yeah um any other thoughts on bird box barcelona no bird box like barcelona <laughs> i'm just like it's it's not even like i think the trailer seems to suggest that um it's not even a continuation it's just like this is this is a story that's happening concurrently to the first movie right so it makes which, it like even less interesting so it's yeah. just, it really man, does i can't muster the 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 will to care about this one unfortunately right, right. because it's not like they did a good job world building you know no like, i mean <laughs> it's it's like i like the idea of the general idea of like a a presence a, a monster that's just so 
cosmically terrifying that you can't even look at it and we never see it. Like I, I don't, I, I, it's a cool sure. idea. I like that idea. Yeah. But, um, the first movie just never really did anything particularly interesting with it. Um, yeah. Which in fa- yeah, in, in, very, in fairness, yeah. that's a challenging idea to, to try to make into an entire movie. Like I realized that. Sure. It could um, make a right. good short like that. Yeah. I mean, that does sound, that sounds a like a, book. like, well, yeah, like a Lovecraft cosmic horror kind of thing. Cause I think that's kind yeah. of what they do anyways. That's, that's, if, if you come in contact with them, they drive you crazy. Like that. Yeah. That's definitely, yeah. definitely, that's definitely the a part of the inspiration for it for sure. Oh yeah. For um, sure. Yeah. But it's just the first movie just didn't do anything interesting with it. So I don't, and, and everything in this trailer was just like more the of same. what we saw just kind <laughs> of like in, in different, like, Oh, now here, part of it's on a boat now. It's like, all right. I, all right. Yeah. I got nothing. I forgot that there was a the happening twist too, where they all kill themselves. Yeah. I forgot that was a part. That's of what it. they. That, well, yeah, that's what they. It makes you do when you see them. Yeah, which is yeah, it's the happening. It's I don't know. It, it's it's one of those premises that I just feel like it's really hard to do right um, because no one has really done it in a way that's personally made me go, oh, that's really clever. Because it's always kind of all the same stuff. It's yeah. like don't do the thing. Plus, humans are the real monsters, right? Because there's always the human conflicts. Yeah. And this seems like it's just that, too. Yeah. I don't know. This time, this guy has goggles. That's different. He has goggles. (laughs) That's pretty sweet. Not a blindfold. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Speaking of stuff we've seen a lot of, uh, (laughs) this next trailer is for the outlaws. Out slash laws. Yeah. You get it? Like, in-laws, but they're outlaws. But they're criminals. yeah, yeah and it's it's pierce brosnan uh and it's it's like it's like uh meet the parents slash g- crime comedy yeah it's it's <laughs> pierce brosnan and ellen barkin um adam divine and nina dobrev yeah um he's he's marrying her her parents are brosnan and 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 barkin and they are master thieves like the the greatest cat burglars in history yeah. Yeah. This is one that on paper I was like, no thanks. And I watched the trailer and I was like, I the trailer's kind of kinda delightful. A little, yeah, it's, it's a little kinda, delightful. Like yeah. it, it, it kinda it kinda looks like fun. When they crash through a graveyard, I was like, I I've never really seen that before in a movie. <laughs> well, and I think it's because that's a really expensive thing to do because you have to create the graveyard. But, sure. Well I think uh, what what sealed that for me was they're crashing through the graveyard and like Pierce Brosnan's freaking out. Like he's it's really yeah. upsetting him that they're smashing <laughs> through these headstones. Yeah, it, it it looks like a very a plot that you could you'd see like a dime a dozen type plot. Yeah, because yes. we love these now. It's the meeting very, the parents. It's very meets, easy. Yeah, yeah, and, and and meets like some sort of device. But it looks like the people who made it actually did a good job. Um, yeah, that's my feeling on it. Which uh, yeah, I mean, Pierce me from Brosnan the is funny. Like he has the ability to be funny and like adam divine is going to be in there like clowning it up so i mean yeah it'll yeah. probably it'll probably be worth what it's on netflix right it's yeah it's worth your it's time definitely if you already worth, have netflix yeah it's definitely yeah it's worth free if you have network right. netflix it is definitely i i said this in the notes and i still believe is that when if ever ai starts writing scripts these are the types of scripts it's going to write first, right? Yeah, of course. Like, because sure. these are the easiest fucking low right. hanging fruit, which is like, write a romantic comedy with a, this twist in it. Yeah. And then uh, AI could do that in a fucking heartbeat. Um, even like terrible ass chat GPT could do that, I feel like. <laughs> um, but again, this is, this actually looks fun. Yeah. I was very surprised. It was, I was the, I, I was the most cynical I've ever felt starting a trailer. And then by the end, I was like, yeah, okay. I'm just yeah, picturing right. yeah. Grumpy Dave clicking yeah. play on this trailer. Like, mm, I dare this trailer to delight me. That was pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Perfect impression. And then it did, Dave. It did. You it, got it, it did. It swept you off your feet. I was like, touche, trailer. You you ha- you got me when you demolished a graveyard. <laughs> 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 it's fun it's fun yeah it is um uh okay next trailer yeah Yeah, let's do it the adults this is uh 
Michael Sarah mm. moving into his dramedy. I mean, he's been in a few dramedies already, but yeah, it's a garden state, right? It's like it's a, a garden a state. Yeah, hipster ass kids. Kind it of, looks yeah. like it was shot in New England. Um, it looks like it was shot where I'm from, but uh, there's no way to know that. It just looks super New Englandy. Um, and they're I don't know. He's like he's a Michael Sarah type. He's uh, the the girl from It and from Dungeons and Dragons, whose name I yep. forget. Sophia Lillis. Sophia Lillis, yeah. who I'm gonna. I, it's one of those names where I'm like, I need to start remembering her name because she's, she's not gonna going be big. anywhere. Yeah, she's yeah. making very smart decisions. I think who I mean, whoever her team is, maybe just her. She's, she's also making, good. Yeah, she's good, and she's like doing a variety of different stuff that is very interesting yeah. for her career. Yeah. But this feels like like real hipster ass Garden State project. It is. It's um, very like he's the uh, eldest of three siblings. Um, there's a, a middle sister who uh, is uh, an actress that I didn't recognize. Um, but basically, they're all coming back home because mom has just died, and they're coming home for mom's funeral. And they're yeah, you know, uh, you know, re- rehashing old uh, old f- old fights, old drama. Uh, learning yep. loving growing it's one of those dancing. movies a lot yeah. of dancing a lot of wacky yeah. irreverent dancing yeah. in this it's one of those movies where like <laughs> you know you know there was a lot of acoustic guitar being played on set between <laughs> takes uh it's one of those some movies that Ver in the fucking soundtrack i was somewhere. about to say it'd be like yeah. it'd be like salisbury hill <laughs> like it yeah. was in yeah. the 90s <laughs> yeah i i nothing against it it's just this absolutely is one of those things that's like i'm now like kind of naturally repelled by yeah sure this um which isn't to say that it's bad or good like this could be a very good movie it really could be um but they're presenting it as a hipster ass movie yeah um a real sa- a real that. saccharine drama yeah yes, they want us so. to think that so it's like that um, movie Skeleton Twins with Bill Hader and Kristen Wiig. And Kristen Wiig, sure. <laughs> yeah. Real scent of a woman vibes. <laughs> yeah. This, I mean, it's fine. I like what Michael Sarah's doing with the facial hair. It feels like he's embracing the fact that he can't grow a beard. <laughs> so he just went with like scruffy, dirt like bag. fucking dirt bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys ever see, uh, he did a few indie films that I never saw. Magic, Magic. You remember that one where he's like. I don't. No, I don't even know what he is in that. that one. I, yeah, I it's one of those trailers where if you watch the trailer, you're like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I think he's supposed to be like villainous, but he. I. I don't want to like misrepresent that movie, but it looked fucking. Yeah. It looked like a lot. It's like a psychological thriller with Michael Sarah. I'm. I'm looking it up now, um, and I remember he was like sinister in it. Oh. Um, I and I know. now that I'm. Now I'm saying it out loud. I kind of want to fucking see whatever this sure. thing was. It felt like it looked like a big swing, a huge yeah. swing. So I kind of want to see that. Was he in Molly's game, or was that no? Mm, probably yeah, wasn't yeah. He, I want to. Yeah, it yes, was he's him? playing. Yeah, he's playing yeah. Tobey Maguire. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. I thought that was him. I was like, it's either yeah. him or Jesse Eisenberg, but it was him. Yeah. No, it was Michael Sarah. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> I was actually like that and, um, movie, so I don't know. He was in Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, wasn't he? When he was a, a wee little Sarah. I don't remember. He may have he, been. I think he was. I think he's young. Yeah, he's age eight. Uh, uh, fucking Sam Rockwell. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know why that just sprung in my mind. But yeah, this, uh, I guess, I don't know. See Magic Magic. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like the weirder one. I, this looks fine like you said it might be good like it looks like they really put like their a lot into the performances at least so we'll see yeah 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 it's uh i don't know enough about it right it's just yeah. the tra- trailer the trailer is putting out vibes that i'm like the trailer nah, yeah. good. trailer's pretty looks basic like a lot of but yep like yeah. a lot of indie trailers is what it looks like that's yeah yeah hard hardcore indie vibes yeah um our next one is resident evil death island <laughs> this is i didn't assume this was a game Dang. you know th- why did you put this in the dock <laughs> what is this it's, yeah, a, it's another it's a it's an animated movie it's another one of their yeah. straight to dvd animated movies they they do these a lot oh okay for resident See, evil 
I was going to ask you, is this anything, Tom? No, it's not, Because I was watching it. It's not at all. (laughs) The trailer popped up in a few places for me, and I watched it, and I was like, this seems like they should have game gameplay it's not between a game, the Dave. things <laughs> i know it's a film it, it's it's a Are cut scene time it's like meant, so you're graphics. meant to sit there and watch it <laughs> that's really funny why don't they have gameplay no, why don't are, they just throw in some gameplay are, i've seen a few of these i've seen like two of the resident evil animated movies these are pretty uniformly yeah. terrible um, oh sure now I need to watch they, this, this now. They're 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 pretty bad. They're just bad. Well, like what it looks like. So, so this actually got me thinking: is that video game cutscenes? The graphics have been gotten good enough that it's like, well, why not just make a movie out of sure. cutscenes? Um, but then that got me thinking: wouldn't it be neat if video games had an option to just watch it like a movie? Like The Last of Us oh, sure. could have had that, where they. But in order to do that, they would all, they would still have to like make action sequences yeah. like they'd have to take the playable scenes and like abridge them uh but i just think that'd be cool to release a, a game that also you could just make a two-hour movie if you yeah, wanted you just to had the option a... to watch it yeah yeah i think that'd be neat but this uh i don't know it's it's got it's got it's resident evil <laughs> you know the thing is with <laughs> this one like sure. it it almost felt like an ai wrote this script or like what because i was like what are they even I don't. What's going on? It's, it's an <laughs> it's, out. It's an outbreak on Alcatraz, and yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. At first, I thought it was a game, and I was like, "Man, Dead Island Two just came out." He's yeah. trying to take d- fucking Death Island. I I see you. <laughs> so it's Alcatraz. All right. Mm-hmm. That sounds stupid. <laughs> That's not very big. David looks. Alcatraz stupid. isn't very big. No, it's not. This this it's just not. we can move on. Like I don't. <laughs> <laughs> what if we watch this Tom? what we, if we watch Dave, it sometime? we should we should watch okay. these on like a friday these are yeah, just watch really terrible these, these are the right, right kind of terrible for our movie nights oh yeah they're like right. 80 minutes there you go all right they are yeah, I'll, not I'll, good <laughs> i'll watch this piece of shit sure remember when spirits within came out and it looked like this and it was also the most cutting edge thing mm-hmm. we had ever seen and that was 20 years ago <laughs> yeah i remember watching that and being like this is like real life this movie's incredible. <laughs> and now I'm seeing that. And I'm like, eh, jack off motion. Yeah. Piece of crap. Um, <laughs> this can uh, suck farts. Yeah. All right. We can move on. Next uh, trailer is called Delete. Uh, it's it's the most stoned ass premise. What if there's a phone that like. You could delete. Instead of taking your pictures, <laughs> yeah. it deletes you. Yeah. yeah. So deleting a photo, you can delete a person. Yeah, it's, it's I death love note, how but fucking phone, right? Yeah, I guess. I just love how seriously they're taking it. It's like the box. Remember yeah. the box? Yes, yeah, where it's I like, do, oh, Dave. this is this is a silly fucking idea <laughs> from the director of Donnie Darko. The yeah. box. <laughs> oh god, is it? <laughs> and not much. Oh, deletes by the way a TV series, which immediately makes me go, oh, never mind. Yeah, I don't know how long I'm, that uh, premise is gonna have me for. Tra- yeah, I could like, have done this for two hours. I appre- yeah, I appreciate that the trailer is like really intense, but the premise is just too silly for me. Ultimately, here's yeah. the thing. Okay, so I fuck, fuck. So uh, one of the writer directors, whose name I am not going to insult them by trying to pronounce it. Oh um, uh, yeah, this is a Thai movie. It's uh, yeah, it is a foreign. Um, film. they are also the writer of shutter i just noticed i saw which that i would trailer. argue yeah it's yeah. a good movie the original shutter right yes. this yeah, is the, the, the original one yeah yeah so th- that kind of makes me go oh shit i uh like, th- like that that kind of makes me want to see it shutter had like a, a couple of like truly chilling things in it um i uh I don't know that 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 at least makes me a little curious. Yeah. But this person is apparently a weird camera pervert who's just like really into what <laughs> if a camera did something. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. That's that, it's got that going for it. Yeah, I think the, the, the shutter connection is enough to give it a maybe. But like, yeah. man, that's that's a tough sell for me. <laughs> it's a tough sell. I like what they're giving us in the trailer, it's which is real... this girl approaches someone like, "Can you take my picture?" and she's crying. Because she's deleting herself. Yeah. Um, so it seems like they're using every part of the premise. 
You know yeah. what I mean? The, I, that's good because it's a real goosebumps ass premise. So yeah, it's <laughs> super dumb. It's real yeah. silly. It also is, just doesn't look like a phone. It's got this giant stupid lens. Right. Um, like if I handed if, if I got that it, handed it looks to like, me, like, will you take my picture? I'd be like, is this gonna kill you? Is this gonna delete you? <laughs> it looks it looks like one of those goofball controllers that they they make for dickheads <laughs> to play mobile phone games. Yeah, like it looks like, real silly, like a mad um, cat's controller on your phone. like yeah, like a gigantic yeah. controller for your phone. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's so that this is what I like about it all, though, is like uh, it's they, it might as well be a polka dot dildo that they're all <laughs> acting very serious yeah. around. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just really like everybody just giving it their all to tell a very serious story about a very silly idea. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, it's uh, it looks interesting enough that I would probably watch the first episode and then to yeah. take it from there. Like, if it's good, then it's good. But yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the shutter connection is enough for me to give it a shot. Right. For yeah, sure. I also now just want to watch Shudder. It's been a while, um, so yeah, I don't know. It yeah, it's worth a shot for sure. It might be amazing. Yeah, it could be extremely, extremely stupid. It could be. Though. It could be. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right. Next trailer. This is uh, Bottoms. Um. <laughs> this is about. Um. This is a a high school comedy about um. Uh, uh, like, uh, like two um gay students who start they start like a fight club <laughs> because they want to have sex before graduation. Yeah. Uh, and these two young women have decided that's the easiest way. Um, which I gotta tell you, I love that premise. <laughs> and that well, I love that they bring Marshawn Lynch in as their coach. Yeah. That's this so this good. <laughs> this was one where it it kind of had um enough buzz that i didn't put it as movies that deserve more hype but this was this was kind of high on the list for me because yeah. this looks like I, I don't know it just looks like a lot of fucking this fun. looks yeah, yeah this looks really funny <laughs> yeah it's and I, um, yeah i had heard a, a little bit of buzz about this this week yeah if, if people haven't watched this trailer check it out for bottoms yep. it's it's one of the ones i'm the most excited on about um on this and it's just like I don't know, teen romp. Like, like it reminds me of like book smart, but it's a, it's yep. not the same tone, but that same raunchiness and that same like, um, high school adventure shit. But I love the premise of just starting a fight club to get laid. That's, that's so <laughs> silly. It's very good. No. And like, yeah. We, and they're do we don't get that many like teen comedy, like romps anymore. Like when we were growing up, at least it seemed like we got a ton of them. And now yeah. it's like we're very few and far between. I, I guess that's probably part of that mid-budget like movie thing that those yeah. just yeah. went away too. But yeah, this, this also looks, looks like good. yeah, this also looks like it's just going to be a great installment in queer cinema as well. Yeah, um, stuff like but I'm a cheerleader and so on and so forth. Like yeah, yeah. It, it, it feels like it's going to tick a lot of cult boxes, you yeah. know, like cult favorite boxes. Yeah. Um, it's also just like yeah, a great high school underdog premise. Mm -hmm. um, I like the heightened reality of the fact that the teachers are all just like t they just say the worst shit to the kids. <laughs> like they're just yeah. Like it's definitely a heightened reality as well. Like it's a Heather's type of scenario. Yeah, yeah right? I was I was, I was about to say this is going to be a Heather's. Yeah, yeah, and I suspect it's going to be pretty fucking dark. Yeah. Um, Oh, that, I mean, it said, like, in the trailer, it was talking about how violent it was, right? Like, one of the reviews. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I just, I can't, I can't wait for this one. I don't know when it's coming out. I think it's soon. I hope so. Um, Yeah, this is one that I'm like, I, I'm scared that it's going to, like, pass me by. Oh, okay, August in Canada. Mm. There you go. That's, I'm sure it'll come Canadian, to the Canada is far. I want the movie to come to me. Okay, it looks like, um... <laughs> All right, uh, festivals, festivals, festivals. All right, limited release August in the U.S. as well. Okay. U.S. and Canada. All right, we'll touch base um, in August. All right. All right. Follow Let's up. all meet back here in August. We'll meet back here yeah. in okay. August. Yes. Make it your beeswax um, to be here on yeah. time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, everybody check this one out. It's it's fun. Also fun. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay, so... 
This one really snuck up on me and just what punched me in the back this? of the head. Yeah. Uh, sympathy for the devil. Uh, this is Joel Kinnaman. <laughs> Joel Kinnaman and and this is, Nicolas Cage. This is Collateral, starring Nicolas Cage. <laughs> well, so I got I have a few thoughts about this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I think the name is going to be literal because the poster is a car driving on an upside down cross, a red <laughs> upside down cross. So I think Nicolas Cage. Is, is the devil literally the christian devil yeah okay <laughs> i think he might be nicholas cage there's my guess you 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 pay the money you get nicholas cage for your film you yeah. sure do i assume you then like a week before filming you get a letter in the mail and it's like a menu and it just has the numbers one through ten and you circle <laughs> one of those numbers and that gives you the level of nicholas cage and there's yeah. probably a price range where it's like you have to pay more for the ten and this person clearly circled the 10 because we're getting full fucking blown Nicolas Cage. Uh, absolutely. Right? We're getting cocaine cage. Yeah, here. this is yeah, this right. is face he's off doing, cage. It's he's yeah. he's doing like pizzeria cab driver voice. <laughs> yeah. Um he's <laughs> Oh my gosh. He's doing a voice. He's doing a lot of things. He has an incredible uh, combination doing... of facial hair and 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 head hair. Yeah, he's yeah, he's he, yes, it's it's he's playing all the classics plus some new stuff. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Um, He has wild looking dumb hair. He's doing the, the inflection voices, um, but then some new shit. And yeah, it's I'm almost certain he's the devil. Um, It, it just looks like a f- fucking <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I don't know. Man. There's a scene where he gets into Joel Kinnaman's car and he's like, you need to take me where I need to go. And Jill Kinnaman's yeah. like, uh, my wife's about to give birth. It's a family emergency. <laughs> and Nicolas Cage goes like, I'm now your family emergency. Yeah, like that's that, no, no exaggeration. The film yeah. that this is. This is going to be the, the best movie ever made. Yeah. Um, it's also horror thriller. Right. That's its genre. Oh, so he's so, yeah, definitely the devil. Yeah. He's yeah. got to be the fucking devil. Um, he better be. This is coming out in July, just in time for my birthday um in in july 28th i can't i can't fucking wait um yeah very good it, uh i do have some notes i i want to be joel kinnaman's agent because this is fine <laughs> this movie's fine sure but when did joel kinnaman decide that he's just the boring guy i don't like know. he kind of it seems like like he, he was the robocop uh he was in that the killing which the killing he was interesting in but he sort of settled into being like the guy, the straight man, basically, yeah. to yeah, everybody else. Kinda. Yeah. And I, after seeing him in Suicide Squad, I'm like, I don't know. You can do comedy. You he could be a really good villain. You yeah. know, I just I don't know. I it looks fine, but I feel like he's in Colin Farrell phone booth mode. That's what I was where it's say. like I feel yeah. like there's yeah I feel like there's a lot more here to you right it's, that you're not he's doing, a, I think, but he's yeah, handsome. I, right so. i think i think yeah. i think you nailed it with colin farrell i think he's a he's a character actor but he's handsome so they don't know what to do with him right, right. so he's like generic lead yeah. like he's technically the lead of this movie but is he though you know no, he's, yeah, he's exactly. there he's there to react to nicholas yeah. cage yeah. um so like this movie no notes but uh <laughs> kinnaman call me I'll, I'll represent you i have no experience Mm -hmm. (laughs) make some interesting choices together (laughs) i will ruin your career i will pick some weird (laughs) shit for you yeah uh any other thoughts on this i'm just i'm so hyped no it's gonna be fun yeah that's it yeah he's so so clearly yeah yeah (laughs) oh i'm renting a theater for this oh yeah please i mean we could do that again that'd be awesome Yeah. yeah He's also credited as the passenger. They have no names. Joel Kinnaman is the driver, and he's the passenger. Oh hell yeah! So, mm, that's that edge that like shit so, that I love. I was gonna say, is that some like yeah. subtle thing where Joel Kinnaman is going to be possessed by the devil, and like everybody else in the movie can't actually see Nicolas Cage? Is that is maybe the passenger? That, yeah, that's some. That's some like creative writing class in 2001 yeah like, yeah, yeah this is deep <laughs> shit this is uh, this is gonna be so mm. 
It's also it's gonna I'm be the best. The James, cast. it's gonna be the greatest. I'm looking at the cast. It's one of those movies where it's like, ah, boy, be, being a woman is a bummer because it's just uh, <laughs> one person is credited as grandma, yeah. one is credited as waitress, and the final one she's credited as wife in photos, comma uncredited. <laughs> 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 it's like, yeah, uh, that's a real bummer. Yeah. But yeah, this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be a whole thing. Oh yeah. It looks fun. Nicholas Cage is going to murder so many people. Yep. And Absolutely. Yeah. It's going to be um, an, an entire slice of trash, and I'm going to gobble it up. Right. Num, and num, this num, should num, be num. the event of the summer. It, like, it how is this be, not right, the event In a, in a of the just summer. world. The movie yeah. of the summer. Yeah. Yeah. This would be the next Avatar. Yeah. It's just <laughs> what if collateral, but the devil. What if collateral, but even like less subtle. <laughs> <laughs> like just make them just yeah. the devil. It's fine. Ah, oh, so fucking. And then what do we call it? I don't know. Sympathy for the devil because the devil's in it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the original <laughs> title. So what should we call it? The devil. All right, that's too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What can we can do we with that? We... Sympathy for the. There it is. We got a movie. Get, Get the rest that of the song. Man Hurry some up. Cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> all the cocaine yep. holy shit um all right well that's it for trailers Woo. um we can thank some more producers why don't we um <laughs> why don't <you? laughs> uh big thank you to deborah is awesome barbara is great and cancer can go to hell thank you thank you to Woo. dracula the bus driving vampire thank you uh beep, beep. that's close to satan Satan, the, is, the car passenger. It's close. Uh, thank, you, thank you to Driftless, <laughs> a.k.a. Gooch Cock. Thank you. Thank you Ooh. to E.T., the extravagant terrestrial. Thank you. Going home. Thank you to Evil Ed, 209. Thank you. Thank you to Exploding Rune. Thank you so much. Thank Ooh. you to Funky J. Mostly comes out at night. Mostly. Thank you. Thank Ooh. you to Glitterous, CFO of Michael Shannon's Chocolate Factory. Thank you so much. Thank you to Heathcliff's Helping Handfuls. Mm, thank, thank you. you. Mm. Thank you to Ombre, the Mexican-American ninja, says Mabel, step on me. Thank, thank you. you. All right. <clears throat> Let me come in on. Let me come in here. Yeah. Uh, thank you to ImpossibleWorlds.net. Issue one is now free. Issue two releases in June. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you to James Cameron's Prolapse Locomotive. Mm-hmm. Thank you to Chris Shanovich. Thank you. Thank you to Look Mom on a podcast. Thank you. Thank you to Mackenzie yeah. Fuck Shuffling with Willem Dafoe's Confusingly Large Dick Chill. Yes. Thank you to Mercurial Oz. Thank you. Thank you to Mike the Lurker. Thank you. Thank you to musical guest Rob Ritchie. Thank you. Thank you to No One Can Hear You Scream in Space McNulty. Thank you. And thank you to Norm from Cheers. Thank Norm. you. Norm. <laughs> uh, SAG voted to strike. Yeah, sure. hell yeah. They should. Yeah, Directors Guild didn't. They reached an agreement, but from what I, I, I haven't read enough of it. But apparently, they're like they're gonna have like conversations about AI every two years or so. Like they got a a decent deal. I don't know what's going on anymore. But right. uh, yeah, we all saw this coming. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm honestly very glad because now it kind of ends the AI conversation. Yep. In the sense that they were like. Well, we'll just get AI to write the things. And it's like, no, you won't. Nope, no one's in happening. it anymore. Yeah. Yep. So I I know this strike isn't into effect until I think July. Um, if I think, I also think they're not officially, they, they authorized the they strike. They authorized it, yeah. If yeah. their demands aren't met. Right. So best case scenario is demands they are strike met. a the demands are yeah, met, exactly. but hopefully it also rolls over into the WGA stuff. Right. Because, yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, it will go back to the AI conversation, right? Um, but it's a start, right? It, it's as people keep saying, this is literally it. Like AI is not ready yet; it is nowhere near close. But the next time there'll be a strike, it'll probably be too late. Yep. So this is a good time. Like this they is the industry for now, the first. Is what what yeah yeah because yeah. law they're, does they're, not keep up with technology, and so yes. we need to get ahead of no. it. Basically. Yeah, unlike our government, the, it, these guilds are getting on it at the right time to say, yeah, okay, absolutely. before we get there, let's set up some rules. So I really hope they get what they want, as obviously the WGA, 
And I I hope that, you know, if they don't, they fucking stick our wrench in the system. Yeah. For absolutely. a good long time. Yeah. No, that's the yeah, point because of unions it, it, is, <laughs> is that we there's people are stronger together when they're able to collectively bargain. Like I work with uh I mean, I work for the community college district now, but it's my whole job is to make sure that people are getting paid their union wages that have been negotiated. And the reason that job right. even exists is because the people that are like the they're that are owning the business are going to try to screw over their workers and like we've known that yeah. for hundreds of years now so yeah we know yeah. you this is what you need to do every every worker that feels like they're mistreated should be striking absolutely right we talked about this for a very long time um we yeah some more news to a video on unions where uh, can you guess the era in which unions fell apart any guesses can you guess Reagan. who was the president was? yeah <laughs> We really need to fucking think about the Reagan years and what they did to this country. Yeah. Because, yeah, we we it all came unraveled in the 80s. And we really need to think about this shit again, because my goodness. Um, it was sort of cheating for me. I worked on that episode. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, true. I, I work <laughs> so with you. Union, your so. answer doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? This is a superficial concern. I think Deadpool three is going to have some issues because I already saw those those um, they're shooting it, and apparently Ryan Reynolds can't improvise because of the WGA strike. He just oh. he's not allowed to. Um, and I'm guessing he improvises a lot in the previous films. And now with the SAG strike, I wonder if there's a lot of movies like Deadpool who are desperately wrapping up, who are just like, okay, we got to get this fucking thing done in the next month yeah so i hope deadpool 3 doesn't fall victim to both of those things you know what i mean where i hope they don't rush it too much and like you know i i i just i i, I enjoyed the first two deadpools so yeah, like i'm too. scared that yeah. they're gonna you know they're gonna rush it and they're gonna be like okay no improvising and we got to get this done in a month um well, so hopefully. we'll see Hopefully, it's also a case where I'm pretty because I'm pretty sure Ryan Reynolds is a producer on those films. Um, yeah, that right. the actors within that movie have enough power to be like, no, we're gonna we'll put a pause on this. We'll do whatever we need to do, but we're going to right. participate with the strike and then finish the movie if that's what we want to yeah, do. Yeah, it's yeah. I yeah, I hope you're right there because yeah, the problem is the studios, right? Absolutely. And like, so this next month, there might be some movies that they're just going to fucking rush. And that's exactly what they should do. They need to say, OK, we need to address this um, and not live in denial and try to keep pushing forward. Yep. I don't know. You know, we also need this for the video game industry, the special effects industry, animation industry. I guess all of the, all of the industries. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, even yeah, more pretty much like the railway industry needs. More. Yeah. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> all of them um yeah i guess i guess i i could list them all but that would take some time yeah just every industry yeah yeah because ai is kind of that's the other big thing is like yep. ai isn't i i it is devastating to artists it absolutely is however because the conversation is so focused on artists um what people aren't going to realize is that a lot of other jobs will just fucking poof vanish in that conversation well, that's been happening like yeah, yeah that's already have happening been being lost to automation yeah. yeah and i i mean also in production like film production yeah. stuff it's uh, just yeah. customer sir they, yeah there was that story of the fucking eating disorder helpline that switched with a bot uh, who they then God, had to fire yeah. the bot yeah God, <laughs> that's very silly no because every so exec yeah is gonna want to like as soon as they're able to be like, oh, we don't have to fire, we don't have to hire a cinematographer anymore. We just need to put in all of these fucking movies into the AI, and it'll tell us what shots to frame. Like you know that yep. they're gonna want to do that shit too, and it's it's ridiculous. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Hopefully good. though. Protections now. Hopefully, yeah. I feel like SAG's gonna do a good job because the WGA obviously great signs, but they're all writers. So yep. they're probably easy to ignore. They've been ignored for for their whole careers. That's what studios do. You can just ignore them. Yeah. SAG, it's theater kids getting together outside. <laughs> so they're going to be a fucking menace, right? So yeah. there'll be guitars and songs and yeah. nobody wants and, that for and a long costumes. Term. Yeah. No. No. 
no executive wants to drive to work and see that yeah uh right outside so yeah nobody wants hopefully to see yeah singing rent seasons of love outside of the office yeah right <laughs> they don't want to drive up and see laura linney hacky sacking right <laughs> But also, like, no one wants Laura Linney mad at them, you know? Yeah, I don't want you? that. I don't want that. No. Or, like, Michael Shannon. Imagine if Michael Shannon was mad at you. I don't dare. Like, I don't dare. Yeah. I don't want any of that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Joan Cusack? Um, Why would, no, of course not. No. No. They're they're maniacs. I'm not, um, I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. <laughs> no. So, uh, big superhero news. Huge news. Captain America 4 is being retitled. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> it's a brave new world. Instead yeah, of, instead I, at of first new I world was order. Like, the reason I put this in, I was like, is that a comic book thing Tom, Tom might know? And then I realized it was originally called New World Order, and I was like, oh. That's a wrestling that's, thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's also like... Stuff too, but It's other darker stuff. But it's, yeah. It's, yeah. So I think that's why, right? And I do think Vince McMahon would be litigious enough to sue Disney for trying to take New World (laughs) Order from him. Because he had that whole fight about the WWF with the World Wildlife Fund back in the 90s. So I wouldn't be surprised if, yeah. But I don't know. Also, New World Order is kind of... A little, it's, yeah, well, that's, it's a little charged, brand, right? right? <laughs> that's well, what that's, I was saying. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. almost right. certain that's yeah, why yeah. they changed it. Yeah, because they googled New World Order. <laughs> They're like, oh, we just keep, the web pages we keep getting to it's is a lot not of Nazi good. Stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> flags on this web page, but not like you know the Captain America type. Yeah, um, that's so the kind yeah, we want. yeah, I think that's it. I'm excited for this film just because I can't wait to watch Harrison Ford half-ass through it. Um, I just hope he's in every scene. He's there. Yeah, yeah, I hope he's. I hope he's front and center. I hope they put him in like a mech suit. I hope <laughs> it's like he's like. I hope he's like. They there's like CGI fights with him, right? He's playing the uh, William Hurt character. Yeah, yeah he is. I so he might. He, I assume he's in Sam Elliott character like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I assume he's in three. This scenes character's like he's... James Bond now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. It's because uh, I know why you make 20 year long series and you have a character who's, who's supposed old? to be an old yeah. guy. Yeah. They start to die. Yeah. Through a few. Yeah. yeah. Harrison Ford should feel like, ah, fuck. <laughs> like, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but death. yeah, I, uh, yeah, uh, I, uh, I don't know. Is he supposed I have nothing to be else to say about this? General Ross? What is he supposed to be? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's oh, Thunderbolt he Ross. Yeah. Yeah. What? Okay. Doesn't he get in like a mech suit or something? No, he's Won't gonna he... be Red Hulk. He's I think Red Hulk. <laughs> so wait, he'll be. Is that what it sounds like, Hulk, but red? Yes. Yeah, with a mustache with... usually. Oh my Some, god! Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Can they? Is is there someone I can call about getting Harrison Ford to play that role? Like, can it look like Harrison Ford? Can he do the motion capture? Well, um, Dave, you can call anyone and say that. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. True. Dial any combination of numbers and just say that. And yeah, you can do yeah. that. That's just exciting. It's within your power. <laughs> I was going to say, can can Harrison Ford even transform? He's always grumpy. Like he's, he doesn't really I want ever grumpy anger. Red Hulk. <laughs> Imagine mumbly, grumpy, grumpy. <laughs> Red Hulk, who's just not not really into it. Um, I want that so bad. I mean, that would be pretty great. Oh, man. Um, finally, some sad news and some renewal. The Friday the 13th game that we know and love is officially closing out. It's yep. they're reducing it to like six ninety nine, and after this month, I believe it's um. Well, we can still play it, but it's not for sale. Oh, anymore. there's not going to be any support and then anymore. In like 2020, 2024, it'll be officially gone. I think. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's being delisted at December of this year. At the end of the year, they lost the rights, and um, well, the rights are expiring. Yeah, they're expiring, and like I don't know, I you know people know our feelings of this where it's like they're fools to let this slip away they are making a new friday the 13th game that is the renewal um 
coming from this story, but it is not going to be like the other one. It is not related. Right. Um, they said it's, they're, they're not saying much here. They're just, they're saying that it's not the same gameplay structure and that it's not an asymmetrical, symmetrical, asymmetrical uh, multiplayer. Um, but they're uh, saying it's, they're hoping to make it quote more realistic looking, which I'm like, yeah, I mean, you know, sure. Yeah. But that's the thing. Yeah, that's not the that important already, part of the game, though, right? Like exactly, that already bums me out. Where they're like, "We're not going to do that, but we'll make it lo- the graphics better." And it's like, well, I didn't care that the graphics weren't right. polished. It was a fun game, but they were polished enough. Know. Yeah, yeah. Like honestly, I wish they could just make the game again, but like make a polished version. I don't know. I'm uh, maybe this game will be fun, but like I'm really bummed to learn to lose this this game this is yeah this is an interesting i, I mean feel lost. there there are communities on the internet I, I know that that talk about this but there's like a real uh, issue with like um preserving video games it kind of bums me out like they're yeah uh, it's it's like it's so easy uh, man like just stuff like this happens a lot with like a lot of games um and it's it's man like we like a, a, this this a lot of this um this network kind of started playing this game. So the fact that it's going to be gone, like kind of really bums me out. Yeah. Like, we it can't bums even, me out too. Like we can't even play it like at a land party or like, you know, locally right. or just like play it, you know, not online. Like it's just not going to function after right. this point, which is a real shame. It sucks. It is a, it is yeah, a real absolutely. bummer. Big bummer. So yeah. That game was the best. It really was. And like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure on the numbers, people like i i don't know how it how it did how well it did well, it's a great it was, uh, like it a, was a greatest hit so it must have sold it's a, and it's like a cult a classic yeah. yeah yeah absolutely so like i don't know like i maybe the new game will be good maybe it'll be great and we'll play it and we'll find a renewed purpose in our lives uh, <laughs> boy i hope that. so I'm searching yeah, for anything but, right now dave i'm grasping yeah, at straws game, but, but okay. my yeah. my issue and maybe i'm just not creative enough i just can't think of what the game can be otherwise where it's like are you going to get to play as jason is it going to be like alien isolation but with jason saying that out loud that actually sounds pretty yeah, rad that would be cool um but like what are, what are they going to do what's it going to be is it is it you know like are this is are the they going to put the same love this into is the it best that, version of a friday the 13th game in my opinion it yeah. really is um and it was made with such love that it's just like I don't know if you can make something that'll reach that level. I hope, I really hope. Yeah. I think the Friday Thirteenth franchise in general is in this stasis because they're making that TV show. Like, and I, 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 I've said it before, and I'll say it again. What they need to make is Part Eleven, and never stop. Yeah, that's it. As far as I'm concerned. There's no need to reboot it. There's no need to make it a show. Nope. Um, it's kind of, it is what it is. You're not going to make a billion dollars ever with it. You know, it's not. No. Yeah. It's never going to be a big. That wasn't the point of the game, though. Yeah. E- yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know. And the game is the same where I'm like, just make more of the game. I don't know. Make a, you could do a remaster. You can do um, uh, uh, just a sequel or something. Get the same people. I don't know. I'm I'm happy there's that Texas Chainsaw game coming out from the same people, but yeah, it's a, it's sad. But I don't know. no, it's games one of those, come and go. I guess. Yeah, it's one of those things of the digital age that like we just didn't realize that we needed to start saving this stuff. I guess. Like, yeah, yeah because it's it it's be similar to forever, and like that's just not the case. Like, no, this it's stuff yeah. needs to be preserved. Somebody needs to do it. It's. It, it, that's yeah that whole conversation about music and movies where it's yeah. like oh it's on digital now that means it'll last forever you'd think that wouldn't you like it's it's funny how i it's what's happening is that our our system it is like not equipped for the futurism that we have right where it's yeah. like oh ai is replacing jobs that should be a good thing because that means people don't have to do jobs but that's not what the result is right Right. Um, and it's the same where it's like digital media. That should be an amazing thing. That means nothing is lost except these companies to save a dollar are fucking pulling the things willingly. Yep. And it's like, well, fuck, man. Like, 
what was the point if, of digital this digital fucking utopia if we're not taking advantage of what it has to offer um yeah it's a bummer well you're not thinking of it in terms of how much money it can make people yeah exactly exactly yep you know he needs to go on strike is uh murderers like jason Voorhees. that's true he, sh- he should <laughs> murder strike he should yeah jason on strike who's gonna do all the murders without him exactly and i mean oh, if you be, get a scab this place will be it, littered with counselors yeah there'll be teens having sex all over the place exactly <laughs> jason does honest work he does true <laughs> and he takes pride in his work. If you got if you got yeah. a scab murderer to do it, they're just gonna kill some they're not gonna set up an elaborate like no. thing to surprise somebody and then kill them. They're not gonna lay under a he's bed a, and stab he's a, we, he's a he's a salt of the earth machete killer. We that's know true. what'll happen if a scab does it, because there was a Friday the thirteenth about that. Oh, uh, that's true. Part five, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Scab Jason. I'm calling him that from now on. <laughs> Perfect name for him. Dave, yeah. yeah, should we should we name some more producers? <laughs> yeah, we should. We really yeah. should. Let's um, do it. All right. Big thank you to Pete for Pagel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you to Numenol Ultra Microscopic Silico Volcano Coniosis Anti Disestablishment Terrianism Jones. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you to pre order TikTok superstar Jason Parge's new book. Zoe is too drunk for this dystopia. Pre-orders are super important. Thank you. Yes, they are. Thank you to Rev MD. Thank you. Woo. Thank you to Ricky Cilantro. Thank you so much. Thank Woo. you to Rosemary's Baby from Eraserhead. Thank you. Thank you to Screaming Horse Pyramid. Thank you. Hey. Thank you to Sorry Cop, world's most laughable centrist. Oh, thanks. Woo. Thank you to S- Steven. Thank you. Steven. Steven. Thank you to the conveniently placed self-destruct button on the top of every baby's head. Mm, so Thank convenient. You. So convenient. Mm, Thank you to convenient. the midnight patron. What patrons at midnight. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Let me let me dive on in here. Uh, thank you to the Oatmeal Savage. Thank you. Thank you to the producer formerly known as the ghost of Dave Thomas. Thank you. Thank you to the To Be Terror Bunny says to watch the Barbarian Brothers oeuvre. Thank you. Thank you to these seven bees. Yes. Buzz, buzz. Thank you to Tiger George Pratt Thompson. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Ooh. Thank you to right. Tip Drizzle. Thank Woo. you. Thank you to Tux. Tux. Yeah. Thank you to Vincent Tux. with a Y. Vincent. Vampire Vincent. Thank you to why don't you take a flying fuck at the moon? Woo-hoo. Thank you to your mom. Thank you. And thank you. thank you to Zuz, because Pie Guy liked being last. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dave. I'm Dave. 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 Here we are at the end of all things. Yes. <laughs> the road mm-hmm. has ended. Mm-hmm. It is only darkness. Yeah. Indeed, Frodo. Below us stretches the Stygian abyss. Mm-hmm. All I want to know, all I need to know, Dave. Yes. Do you have a movie that deserves more hype? You know, I do. You've saved and us all, Dave. Yeah. I don't just have a movie that deserves more hype. I have a movie that deserves more hype that is out now. Son it of a came bitch. Out, it oh came out. It released God. in tandem. Yep. Released in tandem with this episode on June 9th. Um, and this movie is called Brooklyn 45. Now, a little bit of background. Um, this is directed by, um, oh man, uh, 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 Ted, uh, g- g- oh no, Gogagan. Oh man, I just fucked up your name, Ted. You are, you are the director of We Are Still Here there you and go. Mohawk. Yeah. Now, I, 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 I really like We Are Still Here. Has anybody else seen that yes, movie? Yes, I like it a lot. Yeah. I yeah. haven't seen it yet. It's a vi- it's a very good movie. It's got um, Barbara Crampton in it and a bunch of other people. Um, it is a just a very, very fucking slick haunted house movie um, with very good looking, interesting ghosts and a very good movie. It's just yeah. a lot of fun, solid horror movie. Uh, I think there's multiple ones called that. So we are still here. 2015's We Are Still Here. This uh-huh. is the same director. Um, this is looks less like it, it it looks less like a horror but i'm not i don't know for sure it, it is it has ghosts the premise is that it is uh december of 1945 
and uh, five veterans get together in a uh, brownstone in, in Brooklyn <clears throat> and they have a seance together. Uh, most of the movie takes place in one room. A lot of the reviews have said like, this could be a play with a little tweaking. It could be a play. Yeah. Um, and they're conducting a seance of the host's uh, wife who, who died. Um, and I, nothing says this directly. I'm guessing it's a murder mystery because the reviews are, they, they, they say, uh, they mentioned Agatha Christie. Yeah. Uh, they also mentioned 12 angry men because it all takes place in one room. Yeah. Uh, they talk about how ghosts are kind of secondary to this plot. And it's mostly a plot of paranoia post war. There's a Nazi neighbor involved. Um, or a, pro- a supposed Nazi neighbor. Alleged, it, yeah. It, it's, yeah, it feels like people were saying it's like a little post-pandemic without actually being so on the nose, right. which is like it's five people who clearly have gone through this trauma together um, and are sort of in this locked room working that out. Um, and that's that's it. The trailer is very interesting because it almost looks kind of cartoonish in the in the visuals. It looks very different than we are still here. Uh, and that that's kind of cool to me, I think, yeah. because it shows some range. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think of this? It is very cool. And I think the, the themes of not trusting your neighbors and stuff like that, because that's not just like post pandemic. That's post 9-11. That's Cold War stuff. Like it's it's such a good repeating theme to do <laughs> over and over and over again. And in this case, putting it in a single room like that's a very cool because yeah like i in some of the reviews it talks about how it ratchets up the tension forcing all these people to stay in this room this whole time yeah it, it looks yeah. really cool i love a good one rumor yeah me too i love a good yeah no i was really into this um and definitely more so because it was the director of we are still here which i really liked yeah that's the thing the trailer looks fine but the moment I saw it was the director of We Are Still Here, I was like, oh, fuck, yes, right, please. Right, yeah, because like, the general premise of We Are Still Here is like, okay, but like when you watch the movie, it does a lot of things. It, it's, it's, it's unexpected, and it does a lot of cool things that, yeah. that Yeah. So I'm, it also yeah. has, um, this has um, Larry Fessenden, I believe is his name. He was also in We Are Still Here. Yes, he is, yeah. Um, he's in a bunch of things. He's in Jacob's Wife. I he's, think he's, he's also he's, a director, I think. Yes, I was about to say, he has a lot of producing and directing stuff around um, horror. Like, for example, House of the Devil, I believe, he produced. Okay. Um, so this is a, yeah, this is a guy who's like another kind of like low-key horror legend. Um, and yeah, he has directed a bunch of stuff as well. So like, uh, that's all to say that like these are, we're in very fucking experienced horror hands with this one. Yeah. And it looks like they're doing something a little different. And I'm just very curious and intrigued by all of this. So, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, Pr- Brooklyn 45 is what it's called. Um, check it out. It's, it's out right now, right? Gosh, darn now. Today. 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 On Today. shutter. Day. On shutter. With D's. D's shutter. Shudder. Shudder. Mm-hmm. There you go. You nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> um, uh, guys, that's a sewed. We've done it. We Woo! did it. Woo! Christian, thank you so much for being on, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Anytime, guys. This is a, it was an absolute pleasure to get to talk about movies with you guys. Uh, thanks, man. Yeah. Buddy. It was also a pleasure. I am yeah. pleasured. Indeed. Oh. Ooh, do you uh do you want to do you want to hit some plugs another time or? i am with pleasuring you like this dave in public uh, okay. <laughs> well, thank you <laughs> you want to plug stuff plug some stuff i mean i'm plugging stuff gamefully unemployed yeah you plug some stuff <laughs> no no you do you have anything of yourselves to plug you can plug uh, at the end no uh, i mean you I get plug at the beginning uh, all right like you get plugged at both plugged at both ends <laughs> getting plugged yeah. at both ends on the hype cast yeah, all right we're trying to you're trying, you're trying to get double stuff all yeah. right so. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get spit roasted <laughs> uh i'm on twitter at fanboy christian if you've listening to this you've probably heard me on this network before because i've been here quite a few times um uh, but also like i mentioned earlier join us tomorrow night when you are listening to this tomorrow night 
That's Saturday uh, from 4 p.m. to midnight. We are all going to be hanging out. Maybe not there the whole time, but we'll definitely all make appearances uh, in support of Papa Bear, which is Mike and Abe's big project that they're working on. So come out. Uh, yeah, have some fun. Watch some old sketches and stuff with us. It'll be a fun, silly time. Good times. Um, I will plug our Patreon, patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. Uh, that's where you get some exclusive fo- podcasts for just $5 a month. You get access to Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, Fox Motors Maniac, Star Trek The Next Futurama, and Spiel Boys. Mm-hmm. Those are all there. For a little extra, you can watch movies with us every Friday night. We watch things, good things, bad things. You know, we watch movies. Lots of and uh, Christian's also there. And, and you know, we're pals. We're hanging out. Yeah. We're getting our jollies out. The spirit of uh, friendship. You know. Exactly. We're being come, jovial. Yeah, come yeah. feel our spirit on you, mm. a friendship. Yeah. Yes. Get spit roasted by this friendship. Yep. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I we didn't friend- have to make it weird, but we did. We made it weird. Friendship kebab. Oh, uh, we also yeah. have a store. Head over to GameFleetUnemployed.com where you can find a link to our Teespring store. We have all kinds of cool original artwork and designs. You get on t-shirts, mugs, stickers, posters, all sorts of things. So slap your spit, roast, and peepers onto that. <laughs> oh, didn't want to end it this way, but oh, we did. Yeah. Well, it's, it never ends the way you want it to, Dave. Mm-hmm. That's true. Like a spit roast. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Our music is produced by Chris Corlew. You can follow him on Twitter at at the Corlew, C-O-R-L-E-W, and find more music at shipwreckedsailor.bandcamp.com. Our channel artwork is produced by Michael Vincent Bramley. You can find more of his artwork at instagram.com slash mvbramleyart. Our episode artwork is produced by Justin Brown. You can follow him on Twitter at at Justin T. Brown, and find more of his artwork at artnessbyjustinbrown.com and justinbrown.info.